now like to ask um, Kerry Senior, who is the director of the UK Leather Federation, to talk a little bit about the UK. <clears throat> well, good afternoon. I'm very glad to be here representing the UK industry at this Congress here in Milan. Once in the distant past, leather manufacturer was the third and possibly the second largest manufacturing industry in the UK. However, the UK industry, like many of its contemporaries, has suffered a large decline in the latter part of the last century. It is now a small industry. It comprises 23 tanneries, employing 1,200 employees, and with an estimated turnover of 231 million sterling in 2014. In 2014, the UK industry produced 363 tonnes of heavy leathers, approximately 7.5 million square metres of light bovine leather, and 1 million square metres of sheep and goat leather. A large proportion of this leather was produced using UK-sourced raw materials. It should be noted the UK exports the bulk of its raw hides and skins that it produces with nearly 15 million sheepskin and 2 million cattle hides exported in 2014. However, contrary to some suggestions made this morning, the UK is fully committed to the notion of free trade. However, the potential for the expansion of the UK industry through the utilisation of these raw materials cannot be ignored, particularly given that the processing of raw materials close to the source of production is a logical step to increase the sustainability of leather production. Although small, the UK industry produces a diverse range of products. We process bovine, ovine, caprine, and uh, equine rawhides and skins using vegetable, organic, and metal tannages to wet blue, crust, and finished leather. The leather produced is utilized for a variety of end uses, including automotive, upholstery, and footwear, and more specialized applications, such as military, orthopedic, and bagpipes. Thanks. The companies that remain are long-standing. Three have celebrated their 175th anniversaries this year, and almost all are still family or privately owned. With the exception of a cluster of six in the Glasgow area, they are widely distributed across the UK. Importantly, due to the quality and demand for their leather, all these companies have weathered the decline in manufacturing in Western Europe and the economic crash and continue to prosper. Furthermore, many UK companies are now expanding and looking to the future. For example, Pittard's PLC have had great success in building their operations in Ethiopia, where they now have four factories employing over 1,200 people. This year also saw the merger between vegetable tanners Joseph Clayton and J.E. Sedgwick's, which has created the largest vegetable tanning group in the UK, <coughs> excuse me, and will increase their market share of both companies. The UK industry also has a global presence with manufacturing plants and sales offices in 12 other countries, demonstrating that while the industry is small, its vision is global. This is central given the limited domestic market, but also reflects the worldwide demand for UK leather. Worldwide demand means that the UK remains a net exporter of leather, and in 2014, approximately 80% of the UK production, including wet blue crust and finished leather, was exported. The two main markets for wet blue and crust leather were Italy and China, accounting for 84% of exports. Indeed, the wet blue and crust export markets were very concentrated in 2014, with the top five importing nations accounting for 94% of exports. The market for finished leather is broader, with the USA and Hong Kong being the largest importers, albeit by very little and the top five importing countries accounting for 57% of trade. Overall, UK leather was exported to 92 countries in 2014. However, in terms of global exports, the UK is a relatively small player, standing at 19th in the world uh, for exports of wet blue crust and finished leather and accounting for approximately 1% of global trade. By way of comparison, Italy is the largest exporter of finished leather, accounting for 25% of exports, while Brazil is the largest exporter of wet blue and crust, accounting for 17% of exports. The success of the UK industry, then, is predicated on the superior quality and innovation of the leathers it produces. This is reflected in its customers, which are globally recognised high-end brands associated with quality products. They include household names such as Nike, Berghaus, Oakley and Clarks, high-end luxury producers such as Dunhill, Gucci, Mulberry and Burberry and quality uh, shoe manufacturers, including the renowned men's shoe manufacturers based in Northampton, such as John Lobb, Edward Green, and Churches. Come on. Yeah, thank you. 
The UK industry also produces high-performance and specification upholstery leathers used in luxury automotive brands such as Austin Martin, Rolls-Royce, Jaguar Land Rover and AMG Mercedes, by airlines such as BA and Lufthansa, and even on the Royal Yacht Britannia. In addition to the high quality of its leather, the UK is a leader in innovation in leather technology and the manufacture of high-performance leathers with advanced performance characteristics. For example, Pittard's WR100 water-resistant leather is used by numerous well-known brands and has brand recognition in its own right. Further examples include their Armatan finish, which coats the fibrils in, uh, of the leather in ceramic plates, increasing their abrasion resistance, and their Fireblock 2, which adds excellent fire resistance to leather without in, uh, impacting on its performance. Such developments are important for an industry like the UK's, which is competing for the business of the most demanding customers. However, it is also essential to ensure that in addition to the unique inherent properties, leather can also be given the advanced properties that will allow it to compete with its synthetic competitors. The environmental impact of industrial processes is under increasing scrutiny. The leather industry is often accused of being damaging to the environment, including water consumption and pollution, chemical use, energy use, climate change and waste. The UK is leading the way in reducing the environmental impacts of leather production, as exemplified by the integrated waste treatment technologies employed by the Scottish Leather uh, Group <coughs> and illustrated here. This has been achieved in investment, by investment in their state-of-the-art effluent treatment and their unique thermal energy plant, which allows extensive recycling of processed effluents and valorisation of solid waste as either energy or saleable products. It also gives the group the potential to be independent in terms of water and energy use and significantly reduces waste emissions. As a result of this manufacturing process, their low carbon leather uses 50% less water and produces 75% less CO2 emissions per metre squared than the leather from the average European tannery. The future of the leather industry depends on the development of new talent and the UK is playing a significant role in training the next generation of tanners. The Institute of Creative Leather Technology at the University of Northampton is the only centre in Europe providing higher education qualifications in leather and technology up to and including PhD. The Institute has a 100% employment rate, demonstrating the need for qualified leather technologists in both the leather sector and its allied sectors. The Institute is also engaging with students of all ages, introducing them to the diverse possibilities for a career in the leather industry. Several UK companies have also started ambitious apprenticeship schemes designed to provide young people with rewarding careers and guarantee the success of their industry in the future. And the UK Leather Federation continues to play its part through the participation in national and European projects intended to raise the profile of the leather industry as a career option for young people, including the very highly rated Leather is My Job project and exploiting our seats on the UK Fashion and Textile Skills Council. Leather is an often misunderstood and misrepresented material. It is widely recognised that there is a need to promote leather uh, to both manufacturers and consumers and to in increase awareness and understanding of what it is, where it comes from and why it should be used. As such, um, the International uh, Centre for uh, Leather has been uh, created, a collaborative partnership between the International Museum of Leathercraft, the Leather Conservation Centre and the Institute of Creative Leather Technology in Northampton and was launched at the ACLE in Shanghai. This is a bold vision linking academia with industry, the environment, fashion and cultural heritage to create a global centre of excellence bringing together education, research, development, innovation, conservation, heritage, creative fashion and design in one house. The cross-fertilisation between these fields will inspire the innovation required to take the industry into the future. The centre will also provide a forum for engagement with a wider audience, including consumers, to increase their understanding of leather, its history, its relevance and its place in the future. Quite simply, there will be nothing like this anywhere else in the world. So this is the UK industry, successful, innovative and preparing for the future. Thank you.